friend of the show, former Alabama star, NFL safety, George Teague, joins us on 365 Sports with Craig and Paul. I'm David Smoke. And, George, I saw your tweet earlier today about getting over to the Omni, and I know you have other things to do. Did you ever get a chance to get over there for day one? Uh, yes, sir. I am actually sitting here now. I just got off of, with some of my uh, – uh, People I collaborate with out of Mobile, I got to listen to head coach of Vanderbilt speak for a little while, and you know, so I'm I'm, I'm getting my feet wet, man. I'm jumping all the way in with you, uh, Smoke. Well, That'll be good. We, you'll do really, really well with it, George. No question. What are your thoughts about Alabama post Nick Saban with what Kyle DeBoer's done so far since that shocking announcement? I think that uh, Alabama has done a tremendous job of keeping the momentum at least going well to try to, you know, get rid of some doubt of what it's going to be like that since Saban is gone. Um, you know, the way he's been able to recruit the support that he's been able to get just to help with, you know, the NIL and the collectives and all this other kind of stuff. The support has been good um, there. So I think now it's really going to come down to, you know, seeing how well can uh, DeBoer coach <laughs> truly in the SEC. Um, what is Womack's defense going to look like, you know, in the SEC. So, um, you know, I'm in a good spot with the team. The only thing I'm worried about is can we can we stop, you know, some people with our defense. Do you think that um, this will maybe be a year? Because they had they had attrition because they lost a lot of guys that, that clearly came because Nick Saban was there uh, overall. And then when Nick Saban leaves, they're going to take the opportunity and go somewhere else. Uh, not necessarily that place would be better, but they were there for Nick Saban. Do you think they'll see a little bit of a, like a depth restart at least for a year before Kalen DeBoer kind of establishes who he is in this league? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm hoping most people are realistic about this, you know, where you're always thinking you're going to go undefeated. I'm not sure that that's the the case here. The schedule is tough. You still got to play Georgia, <laughs> you know, early, you know, um, not to mention the other teams you got to go play on the road. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if um, there were some battles, you know, with a couple of games where maybe they don't go in our favor. The good thing is that the playoff has expanded to 12 teams. And I, I still think that, you know, if we play well enough, Alabama might be able to get their way into a 12-team playoff format. George, Alabama and, uh, you know, Nick Saban played Texas. They played Oklahoma in, in uh, you know, in, in games along the way. But now – Conference foes is what awaits Kalen DeBoer and company. They get Oklahoma late in the year, the next to last game in Norman. They don't play Texas in the regular season. Uh, but what are your thoughts on those two now being part of the SEC? Uh, I think they're going to be welcome with uh, open arms in a lot of uh, ways. One is going to it's added to the competition with the SEC, right? Uh, I was just speaking about this, saying that um, even with them coming in, I think it's been an enhancement to it. Uh, it's going to bode well for our teams to get in the playoffs because I think this is just going to make this conference so much uh, looked at by the committee in a different way, right? I do think Texas is further ahead of Oklahoma as far as being SEC ready. Texas proved that last year, that they were pretty good and that they're kind of built for this. Uh, the way they've, their recruiting year has been very good. So I think they're going to be you know, very, very good this year. And I think uh, the process has not been quite as fast for Oklahoma. They're going to bring a lot to the table. The fan base is awesome. They're going to travel well. They're going to compete well. But I think they still got another year or two of recruiting before they really get, you know, into the meat of the strength of the uh, conference. You know, in the late 90s, the the SEC, of course, had some good teams. Spurrier won it, what, in 96? Was it 96? And then Tennessee won it in 90. Eight, but they weren't thought of at that particular time like as the dominant conference when it comes to championships. And then that all changed in the next decade with LSU and Florida, eventually Alabama, and, and much more. Why did it change, in your opinion? Um, I'm not sure who the catalyst was, and, and but someone changed how they recruited players, the type of player that they recruited. It's always been physical. You know, that type of thing, running. But so was everybody, running options and all that kind of stuff back in the day. 
but it was the size of the guys and the speed uh, component, I think, that changed the way the SEC recruited versus what other people were doing were very different than uh, the Pac-12. Doesn't mean that, you know, necessarily better. I just think the size and the speed is made for a different um, different way people look at football uh, because of physicality, man, you can't that, – that's hard to duplicate. You can see it and you think you're ready for it until you get punched in the face and, you know, running to Mike Tyson and going, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, where'd that come from? What was George Teague's welcome to the SEC moment? Uh, so it was uh, Tennessee, uh, my uh, freshman year. Uh, I, I thought I was ready to go in and try to make a tackle. Uh, <laughs> but I got totally blindsided by this uh, tight end uh, who literally landed me on my head. <laughs> and I never saw him. <laughs> uh, and it was like, oh, this is uh, kind of for real, you know. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, right after that, uh, I should say right after that, it was actually happened to go into Auburn and, and trying to play there. Like the speed and the noise, you just can't – it was just something that, you know, I, I was getting hit and beat up on. And, you know, it was just hard as a, a freshman to try to play the way I was being asked to play and – those guys were telling me, you, you ain't ready for this yet. <laughs> and I wasn't. George Teague with us on 365 Sports. What do you think will be different for Jalen Milrow this year? I think he's going to be a, a a better overall quarterback and the, the weaknesses that we thought we saw with him, meaning could he uh, do pre-snap reads a little bit better? I, I feel like in the past they kind of you know, made things a little bit more easy for him, if I can say it that way. Hey, look to this side of the field. Here's your one read, you know, maybe get to running. Uh, I think Kevin DeBoer is going to really start to develop him and and say, okay, let's read this before the play. So, you know, you got options before the play even starts. You know, hand it to the running back, throw it out here you know, make a check or something of that nature. So I think he's going to be a better quarterback, which is ultimately going to help his draft stock um, and things of that nature because if he can start to read coverages at a higher level, um, he's going to be dynamic. What are your thoughts? Uh, if you were to look at the 16 teams this year, and there are some alphas, no doubt, Bama, Georgia, uh, LSU, even though coming off a year that they were somewhat disappointing, um, and then, of course, you have even Ole Miss, Texas, OU, whoever. What are your thoughts about how many deep will they be when we hit early mid-November that have a chance to win or play for the SEC championship? Uh, I think you'll have three to four. You know, I'm going to put Georgia – in there as a obviously as a natural contender, he had, they hadn't lost anything. Mm-hmm. I don't think um, Texas, I think, is a natural contender um, for it. I would put both of them. And I, you know, for many readings that I have, I did not get a list of the Lane Kiffin talk today, but it seems like they're just loaded with depth and everything else. That you know, they may be someone that you're just that you're going to have to contend with. You know, I'm not going to be a homer and say Alabama is going to be in the thing. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I think there are so many good squads out there. Um, but I, I legitimately think Georgia, uh, Texas, and yeah, one other who that may be, I think. So you're, you're probably going to have about three teams that are ready to go by the end of the, you know, end of the year. What do you think of uh, Mike Elko and Texas A&M? Oh, uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm just asking. <laughs> yeah, I see. You just asking. Well, my my wife would be disappointed in me if I if I said anything good about Texas A&M because she's absolutely appalled from the time that Texas A&M came into the SEC. <laughs> um, and so, um, you know, I, I think what they have not been able to do. At, at the school with their football program. Yeah, they had a, you know, a good year, you know. But Texas A&M football should be so much better. I think they're such in a hotbed here. Um, 
they're going to get passed up again by Texas coming in. Uh, you're still going to have OU is probably going to jump past it in a fast way. I, I would not be shocked if, you know, that, that they start thinking about doing something else, <laughs> you know, in the long run because they're, it's going to be hard for them to continue to try to compete, I think, uh, just because even when they were loaded and they spent all that money, you know, to try to get those players in, they couldn't get it done. Um, so I think, uh, you know, it's an uphill battle for them. Um, but it's going to be fun to watch and just kind of see how they actually compete this year. George, you have a great personality. You had that when you played the game. Uh, you are now, you've had a podcast. You've got much more. You're there covering SEC media days and listening. What has been for you the easiest part of that transition and also perhaps something that you weren't really aware of that, that you, you needed to do to make sure you did it right? Uh, yeah, you know, going into a podcast, I think, was natural for me. You know, doing Chiefs Take on Wednesday night. So we're actually going to expand it some, if I can, and say that. You know, we Manich is watching the film, right, and showing the film and doing breakdowns of games. So we're going to do a whole lot of that this year, and that's easy as a coach and as a player because that's what we're accustomed to. The other side, it is difficult, is stuff like this, being here and actually having to – Scrap a little bit, you know, get needy and gritty. Got to get to these players. Got to get to these coaches. How do I get that interview? How do I get that, you know, that one sound bite or that clip or something? I'm not really accustomed to that piece of having to go chase, <laughs> you know, like, oh, man, just give me, you know, two questions. You know, that, that's that been challenging for me. Even when I, I, I would say I got into it from the media side last year, being at Cowboys camp and having to talk to – you know, it's one thing talking to Coach McCarthy or the coach as a former player, but then actually having a recorder in front of him, see if he's going to answer my question. That was, I was quite nervous, man. Um, to, to try to see, and you know, I'm, I'm I'm calling you, I'm calling other people in the field. Like, what what is the one question? If I get one question, what do I need to ask? So that's been very very hard for me. Is it uh, – do you feel like though you could pick up the phone and pretty much or text if you have their number? pretty much anybody that's in football and they'll respond to you? Oh, absolutely. Um, I've actually already started that. Hey, I'm going to be such and such. I'm going to be a media day. Can I come talk to you? How do I get this player? Can I, you know, something. Or, hey, I want to talk to you, coach, after practice or, or something. And they all, you know, you know it in any profession, right? It's the relationship that you build, the respect that people have for you, and the respect that you give people, uh, and the trust that you build with them in our industry is what do you say are you using their words how do you portray it or whatnot and so that was the thing that I was most making sure I worked on and not losing people's trust when they're when they're talking to me about um, things so now when I text um, some prominent people in the National Football League and said hey I need, I need to ask you something typically they hit me right back and say hey can I call you in 30 minutes or can you text me the question or, or whatever it is so Pretty proud of that. Um, not quite the same at the uh, collegiate level yet, uh, but that's what I'm working on. All right, so you brought that up. Everyone knows about the, the game you had against Miami uh, in the play on the strip. Everyone knows about the Cowboys and uh, the star uh, with what was going on with T.O. Are you more known for that or the game with Miami? Oh, man. Um if I had to pick one, and I think they're very, very close, uh, Smoke. I think they're very, very close. But I, I think I still hear more about the national championship game and taking the ball away from the bar almost all the time, whether it's here or not. Look at over here. I'm sorry. West neighbors, the waivers, uh, neighbors just walked up. One of my teammates. I'll talk to you. Um, so I, uh, I always hear about the Alabama – um, play even here I don't necessarily hear about the Cowboys play as much when I go to Alabama if that makes sense mm -hmm. so I think um, more statewide or nationwide I'm known more for, for the Miami game and, and taking the ball away from Lamar well it was memorable uh, and people in the chat saying George T's a legend uh, for, for those specific plays but also just uh, for how you played the game 
both at Alabama and also in, in the NFL. And good luck with what you're doing, your coverage there, George. Thanks for your time. And uh, let everyone know where they can find you. It, 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 uh, just kind of give them a little bit of a, a tease there. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Hey, uh, everybody can find me, man, at Teague Football on uh, X and Instagram. If you like great podcasts, great content, you want to learn how to play football or learn what coaches are thinking and break down plays, go ahead and follow or subscribe to our channel, Teague Take, on YouTube. We shoot it on Wednesday night. It's going to be a great season. Season five coming up, so we've been doing it for a while. All Thank right. you so much for allowing me to be on, brother. You too, buddy. Well, we'll we'll be back in touch, and we'll discuss Cowboys during the season. George Teague with us. Uh, the game against Miami, stripping the ball from Lamar Smith, and of course the Lamar Thomas. Lamar Thomas at uh, at Miami, and that unbelievable. They were not favored, and no. they won that game pretty handily. I I have so many memories.